All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me share with you today something that is phenomenal. And I pray it builds you up like you ain't been built up for a while because I'm just saying, these days in this life, they can dr draw a man down, but God is trying to infuse a man up, right? He's trying to rise us up. And every once in a while, we just need to feed and refeed that we might have the strength and energy to go back out at it because it's brutal out there. And God is so good that he makes this like an, a, a cantina for us, like refreshing us that we might be able um, to get our energy back to go out and fight the battles ahead, okay? And that's what I want to do with this scripture tonight, with this sermon tonight, that we, we might get refreshed and find something new to hold on to and to raise up for. And I pray it speaks into your life like he spoke it into my heart because this thing changes the game, all right? So let's get to it, let's play a little bit, and let's see what God has to speak into your life, right? If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John 14. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. John 14, starting in verse 1. It says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is Jesus. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Listen to me. Listen to me, guys. This is phenomenal, right? He says, I go to my Father's house. In my Father's house, there's many rooms, right? And then the next part goes, I go to prepare a place for you. And we're thinking like, oh, he's going to build us the mansions they talk about, right? With the streets paved in gold, he getting heaven built up just for us. Listen to me, baby. Heaven's ready and waiting. He's waiting on us. He's building us up to get us there. What he's talking about here, I'm going to prepare a place for you. It ain't talking about building you a house. It's talking about making a way for you. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. To do what? To come through the barrier. Ain't nothing but a, a fence up between you and God. I'm going to prepare a place for you to walk through. I got to go hang on a cross. Why? Because through that way, the veil is torn. And you could come through unhindered. There will be no separation between you and God or God and you. That's what I'm coming to do. And you know the way I'm going to do it. And they say, how we know the way? We don't know where you're going. And he says, I'm the way. Hey, nobody else. I am the only one that can do it. I'm about to do the impossible, boys. You need to believe in me. You believe in God? Cool. Believe in me too because I'm from him. He sent me to do this. To do what? Prepare a way for you. Because I am the only one that can. I have come to do the impossible, gentlemen. Ah, and this is where we want to dwell today. This is where we want to dwell because how he started, he continues. Our God is still in the business of the impossible. And I need to encourage you with this tonight because he still goes before us preparing a way for each and every one of us. Salvation and then some. Mm, let me show you. Let me show you. I need you to know that your God is still large and in charge. He is still living and active, and he is still doing what only he can do, the impossible. And I need you to dare believe in the impossible tonight, in his ability, in the fact that he can do what he says he can do. He can prepare the way for your life. Watch. John 10. I'm going to go verses 7 through 10. This is Jesus again. Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Do you see this, baby? Do you see this? He says, I'm the gate. Everyone else come before me was a thief and a robber, but I'm that good shepherd, right? And all those that come to me will go through me and find life. I'm the gate. Why? Because I come to prepare a way. What do you think he's doing? He's cutting a hole in the fence that's separating us from eternity, and he's putting a gate in there. That what? That we might walk through into life and life to the full. Because I'm telling you, he got greatness ahead for you. He's got such life for you, you have not even fathomed, you haven't even dreamt what he has prepared for those who would dare believe and come into it through him. He says, you need to come in, go out, and find pasture. Why? Because I want you well fed. 
I need you to grow up. I need you to follow me. I made a way for you. Now follow me into it. And some of y'all hearing this and like, what? Life? And life to the full. Me? You don't understand where I come from. Listen to me. You don't understand the power of your God. He does the impossible every day. When he speaks that promise into your life, you better believe it because that is his business. That's where he resides. He ain't impotent. He has not gone back on his word. He has um, accomplished exactly what he said he would accomplish. He died on a cross. He was buried in that grave. Three days later, he rose up from there triumphantly and victoriously. And he is in the business of the impossible to this very day because he is not impotent on that throne. He has been given all power and all authority. So if he has spoke a word into your life, I'm talking salvation or the promises thereafter, you best set your heart on believing him. Why? Because he still goes for before you preparing a way. He still got you, my man. And if he comes whispering, he is calling you out to the impossible. Don't you think it's unable to be done because you are not going to be alone in it. He has made the way and he will lead you through the way. Ah, let me show you something. You are not the least of these. I don't care what that devil come whispering. I don't care what you think about yourself when you wake up and look in that mirror. I am telling you the God's honest truth. You ain't the least of these. God loves you. You are the head and not the tail. You are the above and not the below. You are what he dances over. You are what he sings about. Don't you understand? He weighed all of heaven for you. You are not the least of these. He left it all, stole it, came down, and he lived a servant's life just to gain you. He was willing to pay everything because you are everything to him. He's royalty and you don't even realize it. You live in below because you don't realize that he has made you for the more. He is in the business of the impossible. And what he got to start doing is start believing the impossible. What? That I am the head and not the tail. That I am forgiven because Jesus shed his blood. That I am a new creation. I am not who I was. I am exactly who God says I am. The impossible. Because you are phenomenal, my man. Because you are built for such a place with God, walking with him in the impossible. Let me show you. You thinking you less? Like you don't deserve the life that God is whispering into you? Like he can't bring about the promises that he has put in your heart? Listen, my man, I've seen the least of these. I'm about to show you them, and they raised up just like God told them they would. Let me show you. For those of you who think you are the less, who live in lack, who got nothing or no one, right? Who broke, busted, and disgusted. Let me show you what God can do when he get a hold of a man who would dare believe. I don't care if you come from the gutter most. God can raise you up. I don't care if you come with nothing. God is your everything. Look, Matthew 4. You better tune that heart to him. I'm just being real with you. If you ever are going to rise, you better start believing him because your God is powerful. Your God is real. And he is the way. You want that life that you will barely let yourself dream of? You better get next to him. I'm just being real with you. Because he is the way to the promise. Watch, 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 watch. Matthew 4 and 18. This is when Jesus walks the shoreline, sees the gentleman fishing, right? And then he calls them out. They were casting the net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus says, and I will send you out to fish for people, or I will make you fishers of men. So we see some fishermen, and he says, I'm about to make you some fishers of men. Listen to me. You think you're the least of these? These boys are the, less, the least equipped out there to do this calling. But Jesus didn't go to the Pharisees. He didn't go to the teachers of the law. He didn't go to those who are being raised in this, who would know and memorize the whole Torah, right? He didn't go to them kids. He went to these boys. And he says, I see you. You who think you nothing, you who can't raise your head, I see you. And I'm going to make you fishers of men. Like he literally calling them to the impossible. Like, I'm just being for real with you here. Like, you think you called it the impossible? Listen to me, baby. He is really calling these voices the impossible because not one man could save another man. It's only that Holy Ghost that can do it. It's only the Savior that can come and redeem a man. We can speak the words, but he got to do it. And yet he says to these gentlemen, I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm calling you straight out to the impossible, sons. Now come and follow me. And these boys did 
what we better be daring to do ourselves. They followed. Why? Because they, they heard something in that voice. Something hit their heart that can't be hit any other way. And listen to me, I'm talking from personal experience. Like I heard him and I couldn't be the same no more. I couldn't unhear, right? And when he says, get up and go, you got to get up and go. I'm just testifying to it. And these guys got hit with something. It didn't matter their status. Listen to me. It don't matter. When the king comes into your presence, he elevates all around him. You think you were the least of these standing in the presence of a king. He's like, get up, boy. You in my presence now. Don't you hang that head. Hold it up. You represent me now. And when I say follow, you dare follow. And I'm telling you, when you walk next to a king like that, who raises his subjects up, who honors them in his presence, you dare honor him by following him wherever he calls you out to, even to the impossible. Look, I'm just being real with you. Like, I want to show you, like, he, these boys got called out to the very thing that is impossible for man. And you thinking that thing that he calls you out, that dream that you got in your heart is hard? These boys had a heart. Watch. Matthew 19. Verse 16. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said, what do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give them to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Ooh, there's that voice, right? When the young man heard this, mm, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard this, I'm talking distraught with it, right? Because this is their very calling. I'm going to make you fishers of men. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Would you call us out for this then? Why we get out of our boats, leave our nets and our fathers and follow you? Watch what he says. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. How much is impossible? All things are possible. I called you out, gentlemen. And what I'm telling you right now is hang on because you ain't seen nothing yet. I will not only call you out, I'm about to walk you out in it. I'm going to show you that the, the impossible is possible when you're rolling with me. Why? Because this is where I live. Hey, nobody got it like me. I'm the savior of the world. I can loosen the deaf, the ears of them. I can let the mute speak. I can raise the dead. I can bring back to health those who are hurting. Literally, I can bring salvation out. It's impossible for you, but it's possible for me. And I'm about to show you boys exactly what I called you out to do. I need you to walk in the impossible. So I'm going to let you live in this a little bit. I'm going to let you walk in this a little bit. I'm going to let you see that it is possible when you roll in with me. And that's where I want to encourage you with today. Like, listen to me. That promise that God put in your heart, and I'm one, listen to this myself. Like, forget about it. Let me talk to myself for a second. That promise that God put in your heart, that you think is impossible, that the devil come whisper to you like it ain't ever going to happen. Boy, what you believe him for? All things are possible with God. Every bit of them. How many of them? All of them. Quit your doubting and believe. Why? Because your God is the worker of the impossible. Impossible is nothing to him. All you've got to do is believe. Walk with him. He called you out. He'll see you through. He'll equip you. Mm. you got to know what I'm talking about here. I'm just being real with you. God is good. He ain't safe, but he's good. But in that unsafe place, oh, you're going to see a God you've never met before. You're going to see the impossible be, be done. And more than that, he's going to start letting you touch it. He's going to start letting you work in it. Um, live it. Breathe it. You know what I'm saying? He's going to start letting you be immersed in it. Why? Because it ain't just for... Um,
because not only are you not the least of these, you are so much more powerful because of this king than you have ever realized. Look what I'm saying. This ain't for um, just the greats of history. This is for every believer in Christ. Every believer. Look at John 14. I'm telling you, you ain't seen nothing yet in your life. Not nothing. Because you ain't... Hmm. Just let me read. Let me read. I'm getting into this. Very truly, words in red, these are Jesus. I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. Very truly, I tell you, you will do even greater things than these. And we think it impossible. Who's going to do greater than Jesus? I'm telling you, you are. Don't you understand? Good is watching someone else do it. Cool, you see that happen. Greater is taking care of it yourself. Is, is allowing um, God to work through your hands so that when you lay hands, you see change. So that when you go into a room and you speak the word, that life is hit. You have become a fisher of men. That's what he's trying to tell his disciples here. Like, gentlemen, you've watched me do it. Listen to me. I called you out, and now I've walked you out, and you've seen it this whole time. But now I'm telling you, greater will, things will you do because you're going to do them yourself. Because through this life that is in your heart, this Holy Spirit, this power, this anointing from the king that you walk with, you are going to do greater things. You are going to take care of it. Mm. What am I saying? I like watching other guys preach, right? It's good. It's good. I like hearing the word. This is where I get into it. I'm not so much into the worship. I'm not so much into the music. I'm into the word. I want to hear those things that are only gained and garnished at the feet of Jesus, right? Those deep things, those revelatory things, that gets me stirred up. That feeds me. You know what's even greater than that? When God gives me a word. When a revelation hits my heart and I get to speak them out. It's good watching one man do it. It's even greater being able to do it yourself. And that's what he's saying. Gentlemen, I called you to the impossible. You're going to do greater things than you ever imagined. How I know? Because I called you out, gentlemen. I work in the impossible, and I am still making a way for you. Just like I did for salvation, I'm doing for these promises that I whispered to your life. And I take this real. Ah, if you only knew how real I take this. I take this real because this is my life. This is where we live. We follow God out and listen to me. I can't tell you how many people have come naysaying against it. I can't tell you how many times the devil come whispering like, give it up, son. It's too much, son. It's impossible, son. I can't even tell you how heavy time has weighed on this. But in all of it, I dare believe in what he has promised me. Why? Because my God works in the impossible. He still lives and he still reigns. And I dare believe him. I am not the least of these. More than that, my God goes before me. All I got to do is follow. And I'm telling you, walking this way, I have seen impossible done. I'm just being real with you. How on earth I could not buy my way to have hands laid on me by the greatest evangelist living at the time. Literally, there was no one else. I couldn't have purchased a ticket and got my way in there. But somehow, all I did was the call that God has put on my life. All I did was speak. That's all I did. And God opened every door in front of me. And I found my way down there with hands laid on, anointing just for this task. Right? And that's what I'm trying to tell you. All you got to do is start doing it. All you got to do is start believing. And you're going to see the miraculous happen because God still does the impossible. How I know? Because I watched my God walk me into a church, speak one word, right? One sermon. And for the next two and a half years, my life was taken care of by that same church. Lady ran down out of the crow's nest after us. We need you here. We got to have you. I'm like, well, I ain't even looking. No, no, no. I'm telling you, we need you here. And for the next two and a half years, God supported my family, my babies, my legacies. Because I dared speak. And how you speak, you believe, therefore you speak. So whatever he has whispered to you, believe it, and then do it.
speak it. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what the devil himself comes whispering. I don't care if time eats away at it. You dare believe because nothing is impossible for your God. You are going to see the miraculous played out before your eyes. Why? Because your God operates there. He is still living and active and he will not fail you. When he speaks a word, it don't return to him void. And while it's out and about, it's doing some crazy stuff. And all you got to do is roll with it. That's it. Trust and obey. And you are going to do greater things. Your hands are going to be put to it yourself. And you can have testimony after testimony about a living God, about a wonder working God, about a way maker, about a savior who does the impossible because it ain't nothing for him. Because if he can open up a gate between the separation of man and God, what else can't he do? I'm telling you, he can open a way for your finances. Yep. I'm telling you, he can open a way for your marriage, for your reconciliation with your children. I'm telling you, he can. Why? Because impossible is nothing for God. I'm telling you, he can rise you up to be a light for your family. I'm telling you, he can change the course of your life. You may have started out one way in your family, hating your name, but he can give you a whole new name, a whole new life. I'm telling you, your God is good and he is gracious. You are not the least of these. He didn't wear it all his, and meet his quota on everyone else and left you out. Now, my man, you are especially chosen by him. Young lady, he sees you right where you at. And he's ready to do the impossible. Dare believe him. Dare believe him. Because when you are ready after the call out, right? After that promise is whispered, after the walkout, he lets you touch. Like he lets you see exactly what he's called you to. And we all get them glimpses, right? He called me out to preach. He took me down to a house that did it on the level he called me to. I ain't never seen it done before, but he walked me out into it. And I'm telling you, baby, something got in me there. <laughs> like, I have to have that now. I can't settle for less. Why? Because God showed me the impossible was possible. He showed it's been done before, so evidently it's not impossible, boy. Start believing it. I'm just telling you what he showed me. And every one of us have had that opportunity come into our lives, right? Where he shows you the exact thing and you think it's too far out. He's saying, just believe. Just believe. I'll get you there. Just believe. I called these guys the fish for men. And then I sent them out to do just that. Matthew 28 says this. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Like I called you out, I walked you out, now I'm sending you out. Feel me? Now go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You see what he just said? I called you to the impossible, I showed you the impossible, now go and do the impossible. Because you go in my name. Because I still go ahead of you. He says, I'm always with you to the very end of the age. Would you think you're behind you? See, God is leading us like a shepherd. He'd go before us. So I know in this journey that I'm on, he goes through every door before I do. Matter of fact, he opens the doors that we might walk through. And he shuts the doors we don't need to be in. Because he goes before us and prepares the way, just like he did on the cross of Calvary. Splintered that thing that we might walk through it. The gate is wide open. All you got to do is find it in the fence and walk through. Why? Because he is a way maker. And if he will do that for your salvation, if you will forgive every sin that you got, the dirtiest little secret you got hidden in that heart, if he is willing to wash it white as snow, what else is he willing to give to you? Well, think it impossible that he could change the course of your whole life? That ain't nothing for God. You think that's harder than salvation? Come on, guys. We got a big God. We got a gracious God. Let's start believing him as such. Let's be daring and bold as lions before this lion of the tribe of Judah. We part of this pride. Let him start taking some pride in us and us taking some pride in him. Ha, ah, look what I did there. Why? Because he's needing us to go forth. He don't just call you out to leave you floundering. He calls you out to walk you out, to send you out because he's got purpose and plans for you and he's got greatness ahead for you. Things for you to touch. Places for you to go, words for you to speak that bring the impossible into this life, into others' lives. You know how many salvations I've seen come to Christ? Not one of them by my hand, all of them by God's. And what I do, all I did was speak. 
use the gift, walk in the promise that he had called me to. And God went to work ahead of it, preparing the way. I'm telling you, they were triggered and ready to go before I ever spoke a word. All he did was bring the two into alignment like a translator. Their hearts were prepared, this word was prepared, and boom, he had the meeting. And that's what he does in our lives. So whatever he has called you to, you hang on to it. Through thick and thin, through hell and high water, through hard times and good times, you hold on to the promises because your God is a way maker and there is nothing impossible for him. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm trying to encourage you up in this thing because the world will try beating it out of you. And we need to stoke that fire back up, fan into flame this gift, this faith, right? So let me leave you with John 15. Jesus, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. He says, you will do the impossible as long as you remain with me. Matter of fact, you were born to do the impossible. What do you think that fruit is? Ain't no man could be gracious on his own. Ain't no man could be um, loving like the heart of God on his own. These are fruits of the Spirit. That joy that passes all, and that peace that passes all understanding. These are fruits of the Holy Spirit. We have to have Him to bear them. Mm. Guys, I pray for you tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus that we come back to our faith as a foundation, that we dare believe that the same one who made a way for us on that cross is the same one making a way for us in this life, that he's not leaving us down here in the vineyard to figure it out on our own, but he is diligently and purposely leading us forward because he's got tasks for us to do. He's got places for us to be. He's got need of us in this particular place. And in this particular time, I pray for you that you will be encouraged, that you will be emboldened, that you will dare believe a Savior who is living and active and works in the impossible, and he is the only one that can. I dare build, um, pray it builds you up and pushes you out. That when he gives the call, you will walk with him. And as he gives the send out, you will follow him. Because he will never leave you nor forsake you. And he always goes ahead of you. I pray you see the miraculous in your life. I pray you see your hearts of your families change. Your heart change. Be refined and molded and matured. I pray that he gets all glory. And I pray that we see many, many come to Christ. Both here and abroad. Because this, in him, with him, by him, for this is life. And I pray we walk in this life to the fullness that we can this side of heaven. If you need him tonight, call on him. Hit your knees. Get in that penitent form. And dare believe in the impossible that he will forgive every sin. Wash you whiter than snow and bring you redemption because he already paid the price. The way has been made. He's just waiting on you to walk through it. How you do it, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And you will be saved. Now come in, go out and find pasture. Dare to believe in the impossible because your future lies ahead, not behind. And he is in front of you, not just behind you. All right? God bless, guys. Let me bless you and get you a covering. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Hi guys, my name is Cash Hunsley and I just wanted to personally take the time to thank you for watching this video. The privilege of sharing what God has laid on my heart is incredible. And I pray that as you watch this, your heart was hit as well. And if it has, I ask you to partner with us in simply sharing this with someone you know could use it. They're out there, they're hungry, and they need to have the love of Jesus put in their lives, put in their path, get in their way. And I pray our ministry works in that exact endeavor. 
We're called to summon nations, and I ask you to partner with us in doing that. I appreciate your prayers and your shares. In the name of Jesus, God bless.